Welcome once again to our show, Issue Forum, and today we're doing a number of shows on music, some local area Chicago talent. On my right, I have my co-host, Anitza Paraitza, who is a local area Fox News worker and media personality. And to my left, I have no stranger to this show. He's already done a couple shows, Pat Girondi. Pat, uh, welcome to our show again. Now, Pat, I wanted to start out is that we've done two shows on a more serious subject. Uh, we've done a show uh, talking about your life. We've also done a show talking about your son, who is a rare genetic defect and we kind of had a show that was kind of almost prophetic in the sense that we predicted everything that was going to happen so if you watch the show when we taped it or shortly thereafterwards uh, literally within a week or so Barack Obama unveiled the stem cell um, program he had uh, Time magazine had a front page of the stem cell um, stem cell research and we had some great shows that have been uh, going out to India Pakistan where people have uh, emailed us and contact us about their children who have this rare genetic defect that apparently is in the Mediterranean genes or and in genes all over the world. So tell, talk to us a little bit about that um, and then let's go into the music. Sure, uh, and you're absolutely right. I mean this show kind of predicated it all happening because you had Time Magazine, Front Page News, you also had New England Journal that did a story that said uh, gene therapy, the dream fulfilled. And uh, we were like two weeks before that. So finally also with the president signing the uh, stem cell research, uh, the, or taking the ban off the embryonic research, et cetera. I mean, it's really an exciting time for the United States. It's an exciting time for the world. And it's an exciting time for people that have gene genetic diseases. Because once the gene is uh, found out that creates your, the error that you have in your chromosomes or your disease, and it can be made, then you know that the cure to your disease is imminent. So it's very interesting. And, you know, you said we're going into the music, etc. And, and, you know, when I talk about my life, whether it's the music or my trading or the pharmaceutical company, it's basically all the same thing. I mean, um, in the end, Jerry Lewis started Telethon. And in 2001, the Agnelli family from Italy asked me to help them. At Agnelli, one of the biggest, uh, wealthiest families in Italy. Yes, I think it is, without a doubt. Susan Agnelli and their Fiat, they have the Fiat cars. And uh, of course, and also, Alfa, Alfa Romeo, was, uh, Ferrari, prime, prime minister of Italy for a period of time on the sure. Christian Democratic That's Party. That's exactly right. And they asked me to give them a, ha a hand, and I did. And uh, we did it at the Conrad Hilton for about a thousand people. And as a gesture of kindness, or if that's what you want to call it, I uh, let out some of my. Uh, I, I put a CD and some free wine to everybody who came. It was like a hundred seventy-five dollars a plate, and it was a big deal. And that started, uh, you know, the music part of it. So has anything happened now more with the music? Have people contacted you about doing shows and things overseas happening more? Yeah, yes. I mean, it's uh, really kind of neat uh, with the music. We, uh, we get over 2,000 hits every day on MySpace. Now, when you say, what does that mean? It means that we're more popular than ZZ Top or more popular than Quincy uh, Jones or more mm -hmm. popular than a lot of people that you, can, you, you, you hear about. Um, and not only that, we've sold uh, the past month, we sold... 3,000 downloads. 3,000 mm -hmm. downloads plus which, the which all performances go to the all orphans. goes to the Orphan Dream Foundation. Right. This is a non-for-profit foundation, which we should say because we are on Cable Access Network, either Channel 19 and 21 here in Chicago. And I do know that MySpace is a good mechanism for music. We have another guest on today. Her name is Kiara. She's a real a young lady who is a, a new talent in Chicago, and she sings kind of like uh, Kelly Clarkson. Yeah, I've uh, heard of her. I've, you know, I've heard she's incredible. And uh, she's here in the show, and after you, we're going to do a show with her. And I have a friend in California that's not big, but he does like smaller venues, he does jazz guitar, and he's also on MySpace. So MySpace, I think, is a great venue that, you know, if you were somebody in California and I'm in Chicago, 
uh, before you really couldn't connect maybe a bootleg CD or if you flew out to California. So MySpace is, and I think it's a, in that sense it's better than Facebook because it allows more music. Right, yeah, it's space for the music. I was yeah. just going to ask about Facebook. Are you on there and do you have your organization? You know what, I, you know, Anissa, there? I'm on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I know it because some woman told me she put me on there today with doing Hoochie Coochie Man or something. Uh, but <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know anything about computers and I don't know how to do anything. So do you stuff. handle the account then for MySpace? Or no, I don't. No. Ken Barnard, who's the president of Street Factory Music, mm -hmm. and also writes a good part of the music that I do, he handles all of it. He's kind yeah. of the... Uh, Usually you know, musical that. acts have someone kind of filtering or yeah, you know, I mean, dealing you, with a friend you really have to. The only thing I insist on is that every letter that comes from a patient or a patient's family that I answer um, personally. But other than that, I, I really don't do anything else. And um, let's go into this now. Um, okay, you have an interesting life. You were uh, not an orphan, but you had a difficult life, uh, alcoholic father, uh, you got in some problems with the law, almost went to jail. Instead of going to jail, you went to the service, didn't graduate school. And then uh, you became a trader and a very wealthy trader. You were on uh, Oprah Winfrey's show. You've been in Playgirl magazine. You were the most eligible bachelor at least some time ago. Maybe even now today you are. <laughs> and uh, you, uh, you earned some good money. You became a successful trader. Uh, and then you've been involved with the stem cell research. Now, why the music? It, it doesn't seem to connect logically. So how do you go from trader, kind of being involved in a scientific company with uh, uh, Wal uh, Sam Walton's son, and I guess Sam Walton's what would it be Sam Wal the late Sam Walton's grandson also has a rare genetic defect like your son has. Right, right. I mean, Lucas had a, a very he had Wilms tumor uh, when he was a kid. He's fantastic. Now I talked to him the other day. He's, he, he's doing fantastic. But I mean, in the end, um, we all have sad stories and we all have touching stories and there are millions of parents like myself and their children have diseases that are often much worse than the disease that my son has there are many people who get involved with their organizations whether it be the sickle cell anemia organization or the alzheimer's organization etc um, there are many people that eventually will help invest or help companies that are doing research there aren't a lot of them that are ceos of uh, the companies, though there have been a few. Uh, Jita, uh, Ananda, Ananjita from the Wall Street Journal mm -hmm. did the cure, I think, which was, uh, no, that was another one, Miriam uh, Shookman. But anyway, there's been stories about men or women, actually, have become CEOs of successful pharmaceutical companies trying to cure their kids. But in the end, I think there's only one guy that not only does these things, but he's also a singer. And it brings it all together. And the music more and more is becoming uh, a more important thing. Actually, I could say this month we've We've made a lot more money on the music than we did raising. Well, and think, all the money from the music goes to charity. Every dime. Okay. And we cover all the expenses. Right, we, we've, got a, uh, we've got a group of, of guys, friends, etc. Mm -hmm. They cover all the expenses of anything, So, uh, of, of the administra administration. So whether you've got the greatest organization in the world, whatever it's called, 20% of their money is going toward administrative costs, the, the best of them, okay? There's some, some go some 80, 90. 80, exactly. <laughs> But us, um, the way we've made a deal with my friends is basically that the foundation supports itself by benefactors. So every penny that comes in, research. But I think it seems like it is logical in the sense you're, that you're creative and you're using your creativity in just another way, coming from a background uh, where you had to fend for yourself sometimes. I think you have to be creative. And so music kind of seems like it lent itself maybe in that way. Do you ever see maybe like a book deal or a movie wanting yeah. to do like a documentary? I mean, actually, believe it or not, my book was the first book pushed by Oprah Winfrey on her show, Diamond in the Rough. You know, when she asked me to be on it back in 1990 or something, I don't remember, I mm -hmm. said, okay, yeah, I'll come on, but you got to push my book, Diamond in the Rough. It was at the... Uh, uh, Did she have the book club back then? Or? No, 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 no okay. she didn't. She didn't. I think we sold all of about 3,800 books or something like that. Mm -hmm. Even though I did see somebody trying to buy one at eBay about a year ago for like $150 or something. I'd like to find out who that nut was. But uh, <laughs> So, yeah, I, I write. I write screenplays. I do all of those things. But in the end, it's um, it's about it's about love, Anissa. And mm -hmm. that's um, when we suffer, when we have children, when we have parents. We have loved ones uh, in difficulty. The anguish comes out in incredible ways and sometimes very harmful ways. I've been very lucky. Um, it's come out in, in writing and in music. Right, use it in, in a positive way or it can take you down a negative And, you know, in, in the end I say I'm not a good singer. I say, you know, there's six billion people on the planet. There's six billion singers. I mean, I never <laughs> pretend to be a good writer, good singer, good trade. I don't pretend to be a good anything. But it, it does come from my heart.
And I also uh, thought in uh, Clint Eastwood's movie, Gran Torino, he sings at the end. He's not the best singer, but it did seem like he came from the heart. And the music's good. He's actually an accomplished jazz pianist. And if anybody's seen Gran Torino, I thought it was a very good film, uh, very interesting. I don't know if you saw it, but Clint I Eastwood is a very it, yeah. talented jazz pianist. His singing, in my opinion, is a little bit left to desire, but you, you can feel the passion in his right, voice. Right, everybody's got different tastes. Yes. So, I mean, in the end, there's some mm -hmm. people that say, wow, Clint Eastwood, you know, wow. I mean, he's His a great singer. His diehard fans, I'm sure. Right, right. I, I mean, it. even, I have to be honest, my mother loves my music. I mean, she, like, you know, I mean, if Maybe she knows your mother's the one buying the book for $150. <laughs> <laughs> she don't have 150 though. Now, w one other thing we want to do, and then we want to hit a song, is that uh, I know there's a big film festival, the, the, and uh, if I mispronounce it, my Italian pronunciation might be off, uh, the Gifoni film, Gifoni. Gifoni film Festival. And Meryl Streep was there. Will Smith was yes, there. Yes, both members. Um, yeah. And uh, it's a very large uh, animated film festival largest in Italy, in the, in the largest when in the is world this in Italy. Place? Uh, July. We received an award uh, this past July mm -hmm. uh, for the song "It's Your Time." The the guys my did guys did a cartoon on "It's Your Time." It's hard to explain it. There was two Italian actors and stuff like that. And it, we actually won an award. And that song plus "Flim Flam Man" uh, are actually coming out in a movie coming out in Italy in about two months called the Focaccia Blues. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, any other awards? Because I know there's some other awards that you have won, independent music. Yeah, exactly. Independent uh, musician. Uh, I won that last year. Uh, I, you know, but in the end, I mean, I, you know, I'm nobody. And the people that are watching, I want you to know that I'm, uh, I'm singing whatever I'm singing from my heart. And I'm saying whatever I'm saying from my heart. Well, we'd like to see that. So, well, I hope you have something prepared because we were uh, expecting you to make your debut on the show today. Uh, all right. I have uh, a song called Fire in the Show. And I'd like to explain this, just yeah, what it, Fire not in the Show. Not Fire in our show, necessarily. No, no, hopefully not. no. Hopefully but you, not. You, people might remember, like, in the 1920 movies, when the cops and robbers were running against each other, that sometimes the robbers would run into the theater, movie theater, scream fire. And people get killed and all of that. So you were the lowest person in the world if you would ever do something like that, to evade arrest, go into a movie theater where kids mm -hmm. could get killed being right. stampeded and scream fire in the show. Well, I, I, I actually dedicate this song to Anissa. I'm sure you're not <laughs> someone who screams fire in the show. No, but, of course uh, not. I would never do that. I, public I dedicate, public you safety asked comes I first in my mind. Okay. <laughs> well, let's hear the song. Yes. Was it you I saw there on Fifth Avenue? Like the cat that ate the bird. Like an agent from the Internal Revenue. Instilling fear without a word. I run in to myself and hide away The child you claim I was There are no helplines to render aid Oh, grown man, you know that There are no helplines to save the souls From an eaters like you can Scream fire in the show Your mascara running On Fifth Avenue Confusing daytime with the night Singing your old love songs Always off cue Living a lost life without light I run into myself and hide away The child you claim I was There are no helplines to render aid Oh, grown man, you know that there are no helplines to save the soul from any eaters like you can. Who's 
rain fire in the show Pat, thank you so much for that performance. Really appreciate that. Is that a song that you often perform live when you are on stage? Yeah, it's uh, often new CD, and I have to be honest. I think it's like one of my fav favorite ones to perform. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about your musical influences and how you got involved in, in uh, singing? Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, when I was a kid, I think I, I wrote my mother a song called Drunk Be Drumbeat. I was about six years old, and I had a alley band uh, when I was a kid. Um, and then later, uh, when I, after I made money down at the Board of Trade, I would throw parties at, in Bridgeport in St. Lucie's. And uh, so I paid for all the food. I paid for all the gifts for the kids. And uh, for their punishment, or they had to listen to me sing. So we had a band there, and, and I, I would sing. And uh, then years later, um, I started helping to arrange the songs with uh, Ken Barnard from Street Factory Music. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just started making three CDs. This is our third one. What about as far as artists? Who do you listen I, to? You know who I, I, I love Boz Skaggs. Probably most people don't know who the guy is, mm -hmm. but uh, Boz Skaggs was a big influence of mine. And I really kind of stay away from listening to music now because I don't really want it to influence the stuff that I do. Really? Yeah. Well, what about cl more classical? Uh, any Italian artists or any foreign artists? You know, I actually w did with Bocelli. Actually, we, I, we didn't sing together, but mm -hmm. we, we both did uh, he, he Sang and then I Sang at a benefit in uh, at Serafico in uh, Assisi. And I love Bocelli. I think he's incredible. I mean, his story is incredible. You know, of course, he's blind, and he's an incredible... Uh, he stimulates me uh, a lot. Right. Beautiful really, singer. Really incredible. I'm, ju I'm just curious, out of curiosity, who, if you had the chance to perform with, would you love to be on stage with and performing with? Wow. Never thought about that. If you could do a duet or you know, do play with somebody. Probably with Anissa. <laughs> I, have no mus I don't really have a musical background. So yes. I could maybe you know hit the that. tambourine or the triangle. Well, Cowbell. In your taste of music, we, we okay, are. I mean, I really, <laughs> no, I, mean, I don't think so. I mean, you let the cat out of the bag. bag. I mean, I really can think of very few people I'd rather be on a show like this with than Anissa. Oh, well, thank um, you. But uh, <laughs> to do a musical performance, you know what? I'd have to say I'd like to do it with Boss Skaggs just because I, I grew up with the guy. I love the guy. Now, what other uh, musical, uh, mu uh, musical inf influence did you have when you were early on? When you were a kid, maybe in high school, even back to grade school, uh, when you were a young trader at the board? Yeah, right. Not a lot. I mean, you know, I was your typical Bridgeport kid, so I got booted out of almost everything. Music wasn't always one of our big classes. As a matter of fact, you know, sissies went for music. So, you know, I, I don't know where it came from. Actually, I shouldn't say that. My grandfather came from Italy mm -hmm. to sing lyric opera. Now, of course, he was able, never able to do that. And I remember when I was real young, we lived at 67th and Hermitage. That was Little Italy back then on the south side. It was St. Mary Mount Carmel. And there was a bar, I think it was called Happy's. It was an Irish bar. It was fa funny because it was in the middle of this Italian neighborhood, which went from like 63rd to 74th. And my grandfather would go and sing in the bar. And, uh, and I'll never forget that one night he got up and somebody asked him to sing an Irish song. And he sang Danny Boy. And my grandfather's <laughs> voice was incredible, much better than my, I mean, my grandfather's voice. I mean, I played. My, my grandfather had an incredible voice. And he s was singing Danny Boy. And one of the guys in the bar threw a whipped a penny at him and nicked his head. 
and my grandfather continued singing Dana Boy with the blood coming kind of down. It was kind of a, I'll never forget it. I was holding his hand, and I wanted to leave, and the owner of the bar wanted to leave, but he refused to leave. Even after they stopped playing the music, he continued to sing the Danny Boy. So, I mean, can I say that that's where it comes from? You know, who knows? But, again, I was saying it before, and, and I really mean this with all my heart. It, you know, it's all, it, it comes from love, you know, and I really love people, and, and I really, when patients write me and they tell me, you know, Pat, I, I just, yesterday I was on the phone with Damascus, the uh, Cooley's Anemia, or the Thalassemia Foundation of the World is, is headquartered there, and the uh, woman that's Damascus, ahead of Syria? It, yeah. Uh, actually, I'll be there May 1st, May, May 2nd, and uh, she was just telling me about how they're having a lot of problem getting enough blood, and, uh, you know, these kids just die without blood. And, uh, you know, I was on the phone at 6 o'clock in the morning because I had to call her at 6 to get her at her time. And, I mean, I, I, you know, I was just crying, just thinking about, oh, my God. I mean, not because I, I cry like, Woo! but, I mean, tears come here. You're just thinking about, you know, all of the people in the world that really, really are unfortunate. And uh, for me, if, if one little song, if I make 13 songs on a CD and everybody in the world hates them, but one kid, you know, says, wow, you know what? I do like that song. That moves me. That stimulates me, etc. That's it. That was enough to make the whole CD for me. Now, so you like some of the classical Pavarotti or Caruso, the Italian opera singers, or even I guess there's even Indian and Spanish opera singers of the Italian school. Yeah, I mean, uh, Meta, yeah, and, you know what? I I like artists you guys never heard of, probably like uh, Antonacci. I like, but um, Biagio Antonacci is a big one that I like. Um, actually, I mean, uh, there's uh, Renzo Arbore who I, I like a lot, is an, another Italian singer. But the people that I like, other than Boss Gags, in America, probably nobody ever heard of. Classics 4, though, was great when I was a kid. And I understand you're going to have another song for us in a minute here. Uh, which one are you going to be performing Yeah, now? this song is called Un Giorno in Più. I'm going to do it in Italian. Okay. That way if I, it's a very long song, and that way if I slip up, nobody knows it. But um, <laughs> sure. I also sing it in English. It is actually the anthem or the banner song for the Orphan Dream Foundation. Un Giorno in Più means and it's a, a song uh, from a father who asked the Lord uh, ask Allah the force of good whatever it is that you like to to call it because I have many patients who are you know Arabs and Muslim etc and I always tell them may the force be with you you know praise Allah God etc I won't get into the politics of it but um, in the end it just asks just says geez just give me one more day just give me one more day and on this CD orphans uh, hope we do it in Italian and English, but we're also working on it in Spanish and Mandarin, Chinese, uh, Chinese ophthalmologist. So what was the literal that. translation into English then? It's uh, Give Me One More Day. Give Me One Please More Day. Please Give Me One More Day. Okay. Let's hear that song right now. Un giorno in più, 
mi basterà credo un anno chi non ce la va per chi non ha più fiducia e cuore un giorno in più mi servirà per combattere questa bugia questo inganno, questa malattia di una vita che vorrebbe andare via ti seguirò ti guarirò non so gettare le sconfitte a me ti fiderai mi stupirai Vita sarà un giorno in più Paradise was much too good to last Living life with all your love for me And the verdict came so very fast Carrying pain so strong that I can't see Dancing on the stage Next day you're lying on the bed Arriving here so quickly the last page Life's a river you no longer drink I've lost many things before Been hit hard on the door nothing knocked me down down to the ground like this I have smiled into the dark shot stead and missed the mark been injured but never in a way like this paradise was mine